Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bond Armory. I'm Ray Crumpold and this past weekend was Global James Bond Day. Now we didn't get a teaser trailer like we'd all hoped, but we did get the very first official movie poster for No Time to Die and it has the entire James Bond fan base buzzing, for better or for worse. But I think there's a little bit more going on than what you just see on the surface. So grab your tinfoil hat and get Professor Langdon on the line because we're going to decipher the No Time to Die movie poster. Let's get right into it. So here it is, the very first official No Time to Die movie poster. So here it is, the first official movie poster for No Time to Die. And the general consensus is a bit lackluster. At least that's the general impression I've seen online and from speaking to other fans. But there's just something very familiar about the poster. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of something that gives me a sense of nostalgia. And I can't help but think there's more to what's being seen at face value. We were first introduced to the font during the title reveal, and there's no denying the similarities between No Time to Die and the sitcom The Love Boat that ran through the 70s and 80s. The end of Spectre had Bond driving off with love interest Madeline Swan, and we already know that she's going to be returning in No Time to Die. If we look at the Love Boat theme song, there are a few interesting lines in the lyrics that could apply to Bond 25. Love, exciting and new. Set a course for adventure, your mind on a new romance. Could the chosen font have been intentional and hint at the death of Swan in the introduction of a new love interest for Bond? Or could it be a nod to the death of Vesper Lind and Madeline being the new romance on Bond's mind? Okay, so Bond is making a very peculiar face in the photo, and a lot of people are commenting on it. It's very reminiscent of the expression Steve McQueen had on the poster for the iconic movie Bullet, which arguably has one of, if not the most famous, car chase in cinema history. If you've seen any of the behind-the-scenes footage over the past month or so, you'll know that No Time to Die wrapped up filming in Materia, Italy, where the Aston Martin DB5 was captured filming some pretty epic car chases. While it may seem like nothing more than a disheveled, worn-down blue wall, there may be a little bit of a subtext in the choice to use that as the background of the poster. Throughout Skyfall, we explore the notion that Bond is aging and the world of espionage has taken its toll on his body. Metaphorically, just like the wall, beaten, scarred through the years. But emerging from it is Bond dressed to the nines in his signature tuxedo. It's also interesting to note the same backdrop was being used as a set for Cuba when Prince Charles visited the Pinewood soundstage, and could lend some truth to the rumors of a royal cameo in Bond 25. If we look back at Daniel Craig's tenure as Bond, every movie he's been in, the title directly relates to the film. Casino Royale was the location of the high-stakes poker game. Quantum of Solace had the shadowy quantum organization. Skyfall, the childhood home of James Bond where the climax of the film takes place, and Spectre, the criminal organization led by Bond's biggest adversary, Blofeld. Now where does that leave no time to die? Well, no time to die. No, as in Dr. No, that's right. It's long been rumored that Remy Malek is going to be playing the villain from Bond's very first on-screen appearance, and as director Kerry Fukunaga has said, he wants Bond's character to come full circle. It fits perfectly. No Time to Die was filming in Jamaica. Dr. Noah's Island was located just north of Jamaica and south of Cuba. Wait, the blue wall from the poster was supposed to be a studio backdrop of a location in Cuba, and Ana de Armas is a Cuban actress. It all comes together. Man, I don't know. Maybe I'm looking way too deep into this. Maybe it is what it is. It's just a movie poster and some people are making a big deal of nothing. And then again, who knows? I actually like the poster. I think there's this really cool contrast between the beat up blue wall and then Daniel Craig wearing that super handsome Tom Ford tuxedo. Yeah, the font looks an awful lot like the one from The Love Boat, but in the end, it's just a stencil font. Let me know what you think down below, and please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. I'm Ray Crumpold, and this has been the Bond Armory.